by Justin McCurry, our correspondent uh, in Tokyo. He's going to give us all the latest stories uh, making headlines there. Thanks for being with us, uh, Justin. Now, the big domestic story in Japan this week is the uh, significant tax hike. It's making a lot of waves. Tell us more about that. That's right. The news is really this week all about tax. The Prime Minister Shinzo Abe called a press conference earlier this week and said he'd finally decided to increase the consumption or sales tax from the current 5% to 8% from next April, although he's held off on deciding whether or not to implement the second part of a tax plan that was actually agreed while his party were in opposition last year to double uh, the consumption tax from the current 5% to 10% by 2015. Now, this is an unpopular move with the electorate, but Abe was coming under increasing pressure at home and, and abroad, not least from the International Monetary Fund, uh, to do something about Japan's enormous public debt. Its debt is now twice the size of its uh, economy and the largest among the major industrialized nations. Now, Abe has tried to soften the blow by also announcing a 5 trillion yen stimulus package. All right, moving on to a bit of a different story now, Justin, from uh, Japan's second city, Osaka, where teachers are up in arms over the singing of the national anthem. What's going on there? Yeah, whether or not to sing the national anthem, particularly at school ceremonies, has been an issue that's been bubbling away in Japan, uh, in Osaka, Tokyo, and other parts of the country for some years now. Um, it's sort of reached a... a, a a height in, in Osaka just this week because the head of the local uh, board of education there has ordered uh, head teachers at schools around the city and around the prefecture to ensure that teachers are singing the national anthem Kimigayo at school closing ceremonies and uh, entrance ceremonies next spring. Now, teachers in Japan and the main teachers union here in Japan is, is traditionally on the left of Japanese politics, say that the Kimigayo anthem harks back to the bad old days of Japanese militarism and that they have the constitutional right not to sing it. But when those ceremonies take place next spring, we'll see whether they're going to obey those orders or whether they'll def defy them. OK, some pretty strict rules there. Um, elsewhere, though, in Japan, Justin, the authorities seem less worried about people singing the national anthem uh, and more concerned about the low marriage and birth rates. And that's the subject of today's Asia Live report. Tell us more about the latest initiatives there. Well, that's right. I mean, it's not unusual uh, to, to meet one's future wife or husband at work or in a bar or at a club. But concern here in Japan about the low birth rate and the low marriage rate, which is a, a cause of that low birth rate and Japan's skewed demogra demographics, mean that even Buddhist temples are getting in on the matchmaking act. At first sight, it looks like a traditional Buddhist ceremony. There are prayers and misogi, or ritual purification beneath an ice-cold waterfall. But these Japanese singletons are here not to seek spiritual enlightenment, but to find a partner. I don't know if I'll meet someone today, but I feel refreshed after the waterfall. And I hope to talk to people who share my interest in temples. It's a good start. The idea that love can be found at a Buddhist temple is spreading in Japan. For 45 euros a head, dozens of men and women get to meditate beneath the waterfall and pray that they'll find a soulmate. Then the participants get to know each other over dinner. When people stand beneath the water, their individual personalities come to the fore. We can tell just by looking at them whether a particular man or woman is special. Japanese companies and, yes, even temples, are trying to find ways to bring single people together to address the declining marriage and birth rates. A recent survey found that 50% of women and more than 60% of men aged 18 to 34 are single. Studies show that only 5% of marriages have been arranged the traditional way since 2005. In the old days, arranged marriages were the norm. But now that tradition has gone, some are trying to devise other ways for people to meet. Machikon is another possible solution to Japan's low marriage rate. In many cities, hundreds and sometimes thousands of single people spend afternoons hopping between bars and restaurants in search of a partner. These organized matchmaking events have succeeded in bringing people together. 
and they're good for the local economy too. In Japan, after the tsunami, people saw their purchasing power drop, so they were eating out less. I wanted to find a way to boost local commerce and for people to have fun. That's why I launched these events. With the help of Sony, the events organizers have designed an electronic bracelet that improves the participants' chances of finding their ideal partner. Really, there should be an equal number of men and women at each venue. The bracelet lets them know in real time how many men and women are at each place, so they can quickly decide the best place to go next. If it works on a grand scale, this initiative could also help to slow the ageing of Japanese society. Unless the birth rate increases significantly in the coming decades, Japan could see its population drop by a third by 2060. All right, that's it for today's Asia Live from Japan. Thanks very much indeed to our correspondent, uh, Justin McCurry. That has been Asia Live here on France 24. Stay tuned to Live from Paris. The very latest news coming up with my colleague Melissa Bell in just a few minutes' time.